Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Spot Mata here from Traditionally Inspired Meaningful Art and we are back. Feel so good. Um, I just want to do a quick disclaimer. Everyone's home. Every person that resides at this abode happens to be home today. I took a day off. Thought I was going to have a nice cozy moment with my internet friends. School is out. <laughs> Everybody is here. So all of the ruckus to the left of this door. I apologize in advance. It just will be happening. Anyway, what I'm wearing today, I am currently wearing Simplicity 9451. So this is a Simplicity pattern with this lovely ruching. And as you can see here, how it looks like there's a bit of fullness, like excess fabric. I will say that I definitely experienced the same, particularly right under this arm where you have the side ruching. I have made it out of this rayon knit fabric from Joanne Fabrics that I got quite some time ago. It's just dotted. And I have it paired today with a self-drafted skirt made out of this print, which is also from Joann's. And this is a double brush poly, so a really nice swingy skirt that I made back in 2020. That's what I have on. I thought that the like the black and white little bits of the floral would go with the black and white of this top. I don't know that I'd wear it together, but I'm just home, so it's fine. It's nice sometimes to just mix and match some things, see if they work or not. I'm going to jump right in, and I want to get to things that I've made. There um, have been things that I've mentioned that I was making or working on that I haven't actually been able to show you fully. So first things first, I did finish the Sirocco jumpsuit, which I mean like eons ago it feels like now, about over a month ago when I was telling you I was working on that. So I took the Sirocco jumpsuit after I finished it over to my sister so that she could try it on and I think I made it very clear that I liked it a lot which didn't really seem like it was fair at that point. I was like, hey, so like, do you like it or do you love it? Like on a scale of one to 10, like how much do you like it? Because uh, you know, now that I fixed it, it kind of does work for me, you know? So I wouldn't mind keeping it is what I'm saying. So if you don't really like, if you're not in love with it, if you could just leave it for me. So here is the Sirocco jumpsuit. It's navy, so it's a bit hard to tell. I had issues with gaping at the pockets and I was able to anchor that into the side seam a bit more. I was able to move it over about three eighths of an inch on the side. I had unpicked a whole bunch of things. I will link to the vlogs where I was working on the Sirocco jumpsuit up above and in the description box so you can see. But my sister let me keep it. So I was like living in this um, as I was sort of rebounding, getting back to my strength and all of that. And I really think it's super comfy and would consider revisiting the Sirocco jumpsuit again for sure. The fabric, the fabric is what I believe to be maybe like a rayon French terry. I could be making up substrates here, I don't know. But it was a fabric that I picked up in the dead stock section at G Street Fabrics. So honestly, your guess is as good as mine. It is comfy, it is cozy. The reason why I think it is that is because it does have like a looped backness to it which again, navy, don't know if that's coming up, but it has like loopy bits on the inside. But it's super soft, love it. After that, my best friend came over. I had been working on this S9539, a Mimi G pattern. I thought that this dress was absolutely delightful. I made this at the end of last year and it just didn't work for me. Every time I tried to style it when I would put on knee high boots or just like trying to wear it out, it just wasn't working for me because of the wrap itself. I couldn't find a really good way to make um, a modesty panel that I enjoyed. So it, it was fine. The fabric that I used is a fabric that I have had in my stash and have tried to make two different things with it. Let me bring it. It is this fabric and it is a poly crepe fabric that I picked up at G Street Fabrics maybe two years ago. Okay, this what I'm holding in my hand right now is a Sicily slip dress, which I made 
last year in February, so February 2022. It was my first ever YouTube collaboration with Adele from So For Serenity. It didn't really work out for me that way. I think I still need to perfect my sewing on the bias skills. This is going to be redone for my sister and I had already started working on it. I just need to finish it, hem it, do the things. Anyways, I just wanted to show you the fabric of it because it is the same fabric that I made the Simplicity 9539 out of. I no longer have it because it is now with my best friend. She came over on a glorious fall evening. We took a lovely walk with the kids and I was like, hey, you got two hours? <laughs> like, do you have somewhere to be? Um, so she stayed and we just worked on the dress together. I had gone over and taken like notes on the types of alterations that I needed to make on the dress so that it would be suitable for her. So we hemmed it. I think I removed about 10 to 12 inches off the bottom so that it was like mid calf length or just below knee length, I think on her and um, made sure that we hemmed that up really nice and beautifully. I think we added a really, really lightweight interfacing to the bottom just so the hem sat really beautifully because if you've worked with a poly crepe it doesn't want to take a press it doesn't want to listen so we put the interfacing in there to make it obedient that's what we do so it gave her a really crisp edge we also turned up the cuff there the cuffs came up really short on me and my best friend is taller than I am and has broader shoulders so then it made the sleeve sit up even higher so in order to combat that, I initially made like a really beautiful sort of like tool organza sort of sleeve extension, which I added under the sleeve, something like this, but it still wasn't long enough. I didn't do my measurements exactly right, but this does give me a fantastic idea for something else in the future. Anyway, so instead what we chose to do was just to turn up the cuff and leave it as like a permanently turned up cuff. I initially had store-bought bias binding um, on that sort of seam that was holding the sleeve cuff to the rest of the sleeve. I removed that and actually then cut out pieces of the self fabric to um, bind that edge just because it was going to be a permanently turned up sleeve which meant that that seam was going to be exposed and I wanted it to be super neat. We removed the elastic I had placed in the back um, just to make sure that it fit her waist to perfection. I think it turned out beautifully. I'll insert the photos of what it looked like in the end and she was super excited to have it and said that she would wear it to work with pride and I love that. So we got to work on that together and get it out the door with her that evening because what I've found is that I just need the motivation to get the things done because I've had that dress. i had been working on it for a while and like carving out the 20 minutes here or there. I'm not motivated to do that but if someone's there and like needs it before they leave we're just gonna make it like we will make time to get it done and we did so that is um simplicity s9539 i really do i wish it would have worked for me i may revisit this one day um i just think the neckline and the collar and the wrap it's just really gorgeous so that's that next thing i want to talk about is this lovely dress right here so i'm going to go ahead and bring it a little bit closer so we can talk in detail about this so my little cousin was going to her first homecoming. She's a sophomore, but this was the first year that she was going to homecoming and she wanted a dress. I'll try and pop in some inspo images of the dress that she saw online that she sort of wanted to recreate or draw inspiration from. So it's a princess seamed dress and without a waistline, like no waist seam and it has the sort of like rouleau loops in the princess seams and then it ties up like laces up along the sides i was like okay um we will look through the stash and see what we can find so i knew that in my stash what i was trying to pick out was something that i already owned that was princess seamed i was really hopeful that i could find something that was as long of a dress as I could find so that extending the dress pattern wasn't going to be too tedious on me. So through my stash we went and ultimately we landed on Butterick 4497. This is a vintage pattern that I had thrifted some time ago. I liked the higher neckline of this view here in the center. So I believe that's view A. 
but I really was interested in the longer length, which is here, view C. So in order, I think, yeah, view C. So in order to make that work, I went ahead and saw view C and hacked on, sort of drew in the neckline of view A, the higher neckline. And then from there, we had to begin doing the math for all of um, the sort of sizing up that we needed to do. Not only did I need to size up this pattern to actually fit her current measurements, but then I had to account for the excess ease that the pattern would need in order for there to be enough excess fabric to actually do the lace up on the sides to emulate the dress that she saw that she wanted to recreate. So that's sort of where we got into all of the details here. Let me see if it'll show. So I knew that I needed to add some additional flair to the ends of the princess scene pieces. So this is me trying to figure that out. And then in the bodice, trying to figure out where to add excess as well without altering the actual princess seams themselves. As you can see as well, the dress that she wanted has really big, beautiful, billowy sleeves, and these are all sleeveless. <laughs> so in addition to trying to size this up and trying to figure that out, I also needed to figure out what sleeve I wanted. I went to my Old Faithful Simplicity 8875, um, and I traced out the larger size of the sleeve to fit the arm side here. It's nice because it has a gathered top. I knew that I can wiggle it in even though this was intended to be a sleeveless pattern. I just want to show you sort of the work that went into it, if, if, if that makes sense. So for example, in the side back, I chose to add some additional um, width. So this is the side back piece. And I chose to add some additional width here just to um, bump out that midriff section a little bit. So I found that because it's princess seamed, it was really meant to sort of nip in and then come out. Um, so to create that hourglass shape. And I wanted to reduce that just a little bit. In addition to kind of expanding some of those pieces, I had to then add that little bit of extra on all of these sort of side pieces and I think I added maybe half an inch or so but I figured half an inch on every single side seam or three-eighths of an inch would not interrupt the curve too much so hoping that all the seams and the notches still matched up I had to kind of consider all of those um, on the front piece is really where mo most of the edits were made so the front piece was initially quite narrow. So this is front piece here, piece number nine for this pattern. And I went ahead and slashed and spread it right down the center, adding two inches, I believe, um, at the waistline, okay? So this is a two inch um, expansion at the waistline and I just went ahead and snipped it. I marked where my like stitch stitching line would go so marked where the seam allowance was and snipped at the top and snipped below where the seam allowance was so that when I fanned it out it would lay properly and I did that I think two inches into the center front and then added again those two inches at the waistline and then of course that increased the flare quite significantly towards the bottom I um, was very pleased with that and long story short this is what we ended up with here so this is the center panel with that expanded front initially I was going to add some tucks which I did and it ended up making the dress far too small for her um, it would fit but just so at that um, point so I think my measurements and the amount of excess ease that I needed I think I gravely underestimated it especially, um, you know, trying to factor in the point that it needed to sort of tie at the side. I don't think I was realistic with how much excess ease I really should have built into this. And also I was dealing with a pattern that was 
like maxing out at her size and then sizing up on a princess seam garment in the time frame that we had. I don't know that I um, did it correctly. I probably should have slashed and spread a bit more of the pieces and that would have made the most sense instead of simply adding that half of an inch to the sides of each. I think if I were to do this again to get a similar look, I would probably do the slash and spread method that I did to the center front on more of the pieces. I also fanned out the bottom of the skirt portion significantly, but I did that in the cutting out phase and I used my large quilting ruler. I'll insert photos of what that cutting process looked like. I think that would be the easiest way to kind of show it to you. I made a boo-boo, of course I did. Based on the way that I was cutting things out and the way that I laid out the pattern pieces, weaseled my way, I think we had maybe five yards of fabric or just under that. And I, was, I managed to cut this out. And I have found that princess seamed garments, particularly when you're fanning out the, the bottom of the pieces, the skirt portion, it takes up a lot of fabric. And the sleeve that I use was also quite fabric hungry. So there was a lot of stuff going on here and I'm just happy that we got the dress out of it. And I made a mistake by adding a center front seam. I completely forgot when I was cutting this out, I laid the front piece down and it was along the selvage edge. Cause I was like, oh, that's on green, that's perfect. And I cut it out and as soon as I did that I was like that was supposed to be on the fold wasn't it <laughs> but I French seamed it we got it done it looks decent so we have some rouleau loops at the side here and I just went ahead and embedded those directly into the princess seam did the same on the back and created this narrow tie here so that it can just feed through. I did one, two, three, four, five down the side, same on the other side there. And I just, I think it looked so great on her. The fabric is lovely and I hope that you can see that it is a jacquard like poly satin fabric with this gorgeous floral jacquard weave on it. It's gorgeous in the light, the way that the sheen sort of picks up on that. And I'm just thrilled that we worked it all out. She seemed to really enjoy it. I did have her help me with various portions. Like, so I made notes in the cutting layout and had her cut out the tissue paper pieces. And then I cleaned up some of the pieces, but that's okay. She cut out most of them. And then um, I cut out the fabric just because that's a, that's a big ask knowing you know how to do that accurately and then um she helped me with like ironing different pieces so I'd be sewing and I'm like listen I just you know like turn out these ties I showed her how to do that and it was nice having the experience of having my best friend help me as I was finishing up the dress that that she took home really motivated me to sort of involve people when they ask me to make them stuff as much as I can in the moments that I can do that, like involve them in the making process. I hope she had fun, <laughs> but for me, one, it was helpful. It allowed us to do it in time. And also like, I'm making you a dress. You can iron things, put the interfacing on. So, you know, she was able to hear all of these words like interfacing, we're gonna hem this, I have to trim that, you know. So people know how much effort you're putting into the things you're making them. So I was very happy with that. And the assistance was delightful and the company was good too. It takes a long time to sew fiddly things like this. If you watched um, any of my most recent like previous videos you would have seen that I had a vlog where I had like an evening of quick fire rapid sewing session prior to a lovely girls trip that I took at the start of October and that resulted in some of I think what well, hopefully will be some of my favorite makes definitely of October but maybe of the year some of these were really really good stuff so I had been making and raving about M8064 and had made 
four I made I made four of these dresses rapid succession okay <laughs> and hopefully you've seen those already but one of the ones that I took with me on the trip is this lovely tan version and I believe that this is a cotton rib knit this was another fabric that I got from the dead sock section at G Street fabrics which is why I think that's what it is but definitely feels like it it's such a nice substantial and like dense fabric which I think makes it perfect for it being a dress and one that is lengthy I was able to wear this and throw on a vintage button-up shirt and for that I use this lovely pattern so this is Butterick 6422 and I used a white cotton hibiscus fabric from Joanne Fabrics to make that and it was fabulous. I also finally finished my dark floral half circle skirt with the added overlay piece and I absolutely love it. I also wore this to work earlier this week and I love it with a pair of tall black boots. This is just such a happy fabric and I'm delighted that I was able to use it again and create something that I think is fabulous. In order to finish it off, I did a zip at the side and on the inside, instead of a facing, I used this soft knit um, black elastic and I think this is one and a half inches wide, I believe. I think this is my new favorite way to finish off like bias cut skirts or circle skirts and things like that. It's just super comfortable. It gives you a little bit of give, but also has a really comfortable finish. So I love this and I'm so happy that I was motivated to finish it finally. I had a second M8064 on this trip with me as well. And that is in this sort of like hot, pink almost salmon colored version here and this is a rayon double knit fabric that I picked up in the dead sock section at G Street Fabrics I know and it was so comfy and delightful for this version I extended the sleeve by about two to three inches and did a cute little lettuce hem and I also did the lettuce hem on the very bottom as well and because I didn't have to like hem it up I think this dress turned out to be super long because I cut the longest version that they have here which is view f and I love this pattern if you haven't watched my most recent couple of videos I talk about this pattern quite a bit as you can see I had two different wears out of it in a single trip and I don't really feel like it felt like oh you're wearing the same dress over and over again um but the silhouette is just so comfortable i think it flatters many body shapes and would be a really great one to give a try if you want a nice fit and flow not clingy <laughs> um knit dress for any season honestly like look at how many views it comes with i prefer the longer lengths but I mean short sleeves long sleeves higher necklines v necklines you really get it all in this so I'd say go for it but yes that was this dress which I paired with a self-drafted little throw on duster which I whipped up I feel like the timestamps in the video <laughs> where I was making all of these that evening would show you just how quickly this came together. I took a rectangular piece of fabric. I made sure that I narrow rolled hemmed the side seams, like all of the edges of it. So a beautiful hem there. I found a point at which I wanted to have my little armhole. I inserted a bit of elastic tacked it down in that one spot and added these fun pom-poms to the center front so that it would give it a bit of weight and so that I could tie it up and literally it is a rectangle piece of fabric that you put your body in <laughs> like so like this and um, it's just so easy and fun to wear the bright pop of orange was just the best so it went beautifully with my pink dress and we had a wonderful sunset photo shoot and it also paired really nicely with the next make that I'm going to show you which is my crochet dress 
Honestly, if you haven't seen that travel vlog video, I highly recommend that you do. It gives me so much joy and the video where I'm making all these things the night before. <laughs> So this is my crochet dress and it is backed with this dress that's pre-owned is from Pretty Little Thing and I think I thrifted this tan dress a while ago and it was a wonderful backdrop to this because it's almost nude color on me it just allowed the crochet effect to show so beautifully throughout and this is definitely something that's better appreciated when you see it on a person but I did finish crocheting this while I was on my trip actually so I took it with me and I worked on it a bit on the plane and then when I was there in the car for some of the excursions we went on I worked on it and I made it a halter neck and it's just so gorgeous so that was also a recent make and two pieces that I wore together, I upcycled this concert tee that I got from a Phil Collins show that I went to in 2018, I think it was. And I added this fun Rick Rack detail to it from Rick Rack that I had in my stash, picking out colors throughout the tee. And it was originally a short sleeve t-shirt. I don't wear a lot of short sleeves. So I used some fabric in my stash that I had thrifted, this really nice, I think, cotton knit fabric that is a good match as far as like whites go <laughs> and I cut out the long sleeve from M8064 I love the the fit of that sleeve and I added Rick Rack to the side there as well to pick up on those colors so this was super fun um, and I'm just so happy I have this shirt back like in my wardrobe and not just a piece that I look at and I'm like oh I would wear that if it had sleeves so now I can and I'm excited about it and then this was a biggie I had been working on this in the background and just didn't have time or and hadn't posted uh, videos where I could show this to you but here is my Zimmerman inspired skirt because it is now going to be a skirt for a little bit and I added the orange to the waistband this well as the button front placket here I went in with these gorgeous star buttons in a variety of colors that I thrifted a while ago and I yeah I was just so excited that I got to actually wear this piece on my trip I think it was such a bold statement and I love it I do still plan to make it into the full dress but I thought if it could actually be worn for a while if putting the dress is putting me off of working on it just adapt it and do something else that will actually allow me to wear it. and I'm so happy that I went through with it these are all linen fabrics this one I think is a cotton it was a bed sheet that I thrifted cut up into these strips and the rest of them are linens that I have either thrifted or got on clearance at either Joanne or in the dead stock section at G Street Fabrics. Again, I will link to those videos. They honestly are videos that make me so happy. My vacation vlog video, I actually took the time to show you what I was wearing every single day, what we did on the trip. And when I needed to pick me up in these past three weeks where things have been crazy and hectic, I honestly went back and watched that video and I was like, you had a good time you looked happy <laughs> so it's I think delightful and I hope that you enjoy it if you haven't already seen it I will link it and the video that corresponds to the preparation of that trip the night before <laughs> I will also link that video because lots of good things happen I mean look at all the things that I wore it came together so I love it I want to give you some sewing community things that I've done recently that have made me really happy um, a couple of weeks ago, the same week that I was working on my cousin's homecoming dress, I went to see Mari from Mari Sews and she hosted and put together the Project Dresser Girl 23, has been doing this for multiple years now. And when I emailed her to submit photos of my makes, I realized, I was like, you are, you don't live that far from me. <laughs> So I, um, in my email, was like, here are the pictures of the dresses that I, you know, sent in. And also, 
like can I need a sewing friend tell me if things are happening in the sewing community in our area I'd love to come to some things and um, they were actually going to meet up at her place to help actually organize all of the donated dresses for Project Dresser Girl this year and I was so delighted that I was able to join the crew and support Mari in those efforts. It was a lot of work and it just gave me so much more appreciation for all of the hard work that she puts into this because it's one thing to be at home watching the videos and like clapping it up. 4,000 dresses! Like that's amazing. But someone needs to like organize. 4,000 dresses, right? And I just so love her dedication and appreciate all the hard work even more, um, having been able to go there and experience a bit of that and to contribute to a bit of that. So that was so delightful and it was a wonderful sort of morning, afternoon, um, you know, activity and I got to meet her in person and she is just as vibrant and sweet and incredible as she appears in her videos. And then I got to meet some of her sewing friends, like actual people. So that was really nice as well. Then last weekend, I went to my first sewing social ever. It was virtual and it was hosted by Sequin Girly and I believe um, it was also assisted by Gemini Stitches. Mm -hmm. So thank you ladies so much. Sam had mentioned this in her videos, Sam from Sequin Girly Creates. And I was like, I think I'd be into that. I have been so jealous of a lot of my UK friends who talk about all of these sewing socials that they're attending. Sam runs some locally where she is <laughs> on the other side of the pond. And it was really nice for her to offer this virtual option. I remember as soon as she announced it, I hopped on it right away, got a ticket. And it was a day that I was looking forward to for quite a few weeks. And finally, we were able to get together last weekend and I had so much fun. I worked on quite a few pieces, so I'll show you what I got done. I had a comment recently for my Burnett unboxing when I shared with you guys my unboxing for the Burnett machine that I got myself two Thanksgivings ago. It's about to be two years ago this Black Friday. <laughs> so. It's been a while. And they were like, oh, I see that you've had your machine for over a year. Could you do an update? Who the secret is, guys, I have been sewing with my Singer Sewer sewing machine. Here's what went down. When I did the Sew um, Purple to end ALZ with Michelle from Michelle Sews Again, I, I messed up my burnet. I somehow nicked the bobbin case not like a bobbin but the case that the bobbin goes in inside of the machine i had tilted it off kilter because i was switching over the throat plate on the top of my machine did not know i did that began to sew nicked it the bobbin case no longer worked I was already due for my like one year servicing i took it to or the bernina dealer where i purchased it they fixed it. I got it back home after like a month or so. I got it back home. I started sewing with it and the tension was all off. Shouldn't I have called them, inquired about this and returned it? Yes. Did I? No. Why? Because I'd already taken out my Singer sewing machine and was like, well, fine. I'll just keep sewing on that. So I have. And I never really looked back. I did miss the knee lever. Like there are features of it, the automatic like start and stop or the there are features on my burnet machine I will admit I miss. However, my singer, it just does not do me wrong. So I guess to answer that question, I have had it for over a year. I have not used my machine for over a year <laughs> because I broke it. And then it took me forever to actually get it to the burnet, to the Bernina dealer. Then when I got it back, I just was like, why is it wonky and never said anything <laughs> to the dealership for them to refix it so what that comment did was a number of things i was like Fabata, why don't you just bring it back out rethread the whole machine just like start over and see if maybe it was just a wonky thing with the fabric the whatever you were doing that day <laughs> like see if your machine is is good to go and bring your baby back out then two i was like i want to tell the people 
expensive honestly is not always better let me just be the first to say yes there are features like i said that i miss about my burnett if i think about it long enough but i've been sewing with my singer for so many months now that i have forgotten those you know what i mean like when i bring my burnett back out i'll be like oh yeah this is a breeze look at me lifting up the needle with my knee and doing fun stuff i'm sure i'm gonna love it again but i feel no loss at all <laughs> having been sewing on my singer sewing machine for all of these months so i just want to put that out there for those of you who are about to be putting new decadent sewing machines on lists if that's not in the budget just know that there are other machines in the hundreds before you reach the you know the, the four digit numbers <laughs> for sewing machines there are reasonably priced machines that get the job done and i just want to be you know someone to say that to you because i thought i needed all the things I enjoyed them while I had them. And then when it was taken away from me, I realized that Old Faithful never did me wrong to begin with. But yeah, I will break out the Burnett again and figure out what the heck was the problem. And hopefully I will be able to do a an update to how I like my sewing machine once I've used it first, you know, once I've used it again. <laughs> um... I recently did my closet swap over from my spring summer to my fall winter wardrobe. I am a person who does that. I like to pack the things away, get them out of the closet um, when it's not seasonally appropriate or not the size, not, you know, all the things, move it out so that what I'm looking at is actually what I could put on my body for that moment. And I did that like two weeks ago, which felt really, really good. Things that I want to share with you before I leave you, because this is, how long has this been? Forever and a day. Forever and a day we've been together. But it's okay. If you're having a good time, I'm having a great time. Okay. I have cut out, prior to leaving for my excursion, these two patterns. Okay. I cut out McCall's 7476. The long version here, view E, in two different fabrics, y'all. And there was a whisper in this part of my brain, like back here, that I heard. It was so faint, but I did hear it. It said, Fatmana, just, just cut out the first one and sew that first. And then cut out number two. You know, because, because what if you want to change something? And then I left and did possibly two tasks unrelated to, to that project and came back to my cutting session and then just proceeded to cut out the second sweater. And I wish that that voice had been just a little bit louder, just a little bit closer to the frontal lobe because where was that voice when I needed it to stop me from cutting the second version because I should have stopped. I should have quit while I was ahead because then I made a mistake given that the second fabric that I was working with was much narrower. And for the first time, I noticed big, big splotches of discoloration on this fabric that I thought was pristine. <laughs> Here are the two fabrics. This was the first. Look at this. I think it is like a wool knit. It definitely gives off wool, okay? I thrifted this fabric years ago. Okay, it's been in my stash and I was like, ooh, this would be real nice. So I was so happy to get this cut out. Cut this out first. It was a wide width of fabric mm -hmm. and it just gave me ample space to play and to cut out all the things and I got the pockets and I put the pins in the spaces where because of the loft of this fabric, you know, putting like you're not using a pen or a marker to mark this up. Okay, so you're either using a tailor's tack needle and thread old-fashioned style or you could do like me just pull a pin okay so that was number one should have quit while i was ahead because then i moved on to my secondary fabric which was this all right it's a ribbing like 
actually meant and intended to be actual ribbing. Um, so dense and again, really, really great weight. And I thought, look at this color, right? Like I have things that would go with this, right? Then I noticed the splotches and now I, I was like, oh, wasn't expecting that. And because this is just like a long length duster, sp large splotches or discoloration would really just be so noticeable. You know, it's just, it's just so noticeable. So I decided, you know, I'm gonna move the things. I'm gonna move the pieces uh, in, a, in a way that I can really manipulate this, okay? I was dealing with effectively like half the width of the previous fabric. So I'm sitting there trying to calculate how am I gonna do all the things. And what I would have come to realize was that instead of cutting a separate collar piece, which is here, instead of cutting this separate collar piece that is gonna be this, right? which then requires you to cut the, the collar facing, okay? Like a whole separate facing piece. So as you can look at the edge of this fabric, look at how neatly it is finished off at the edge there. So had I taken a moment to give myself an opportunity to sew the first one, I might have come to the conclusion that I could actually cut out the front piece as one singular piece and just have the fabric fold over on itself, right? Like I would have worked out, I would have, I would have figured out the layout that would allow me and enable me to do that effectively and just have the collar extend from the front body piece. But I didn't give myself that time to think I didn't. I just went straight on into cutting this out. And then at the end of it all, I didn't have enough to cut what? The facing. <laughs> so in my sash I went, I found this piece of fabric, which is a woven, right? But look at the color match. Did you even see like this? Okay, this is the knit. This is the woven. Do you see the color match, people? And this is why I buy fabrics that I like when I see them because in, in the end, my experience has taught me that I know a thing or two and it comes together in the end. So what I will do, seeing that the facing piece is meant to be interfaced anyways, right? I think what I'm going to do is cut out, here I have the facing piece, here with me, is cut out the facing piece out of this woven fabric and wish for the best. What other option do I have, friends? Not many. So that's what I'm going to do when I get to that. I think because I had had such a good experience with a previous make that I then went on to make multiples of, I just went for it. You know, it's like it's a duster. What's the worst that can happen? And I really do need to take a moment sometimes to say, Fatmata, like do the one first, confirm that you love it, and then batch sew. But we don't initiate the batch sew sequence prior to the confirmation that the pattern is going to do what the pattern needs to do. Fatmata, learn lessons from thyself. That was my note to self. Secondly, I cut out this awesome men's bomber jacket pattern, S9190. Okay, now in a previous pattern haul, I went on and on about how there's this other simplicity women's bomber jacket pattern that I had been scouring stores looking for. Found them, put them in my stash. Why am I using this men's pattern for a bomber jacket for myself? Well, friends, it's because the fit that I want is going to be an oversized, boxy, lovely, menswear inspired pattern. But I did question myself. I was like, Fatmata, you legitimately raved about how you couldn't wait to make that other bomber jacket. I'll get to it. I cut that bomber jacket out of the tapestry fabric that you would have seen in my fabric organizing video. Look at this. It's the back of it. It's a gorgeous woven fabric. I washed it. it has the most beautiful texture. 
and I can't wait. It's all cut out. I cannot wait to work on it. Here's my question for the group. For the lining, I initially cut out this really lightweight poly, you know, just like a lining fabric. Should I put fleece in it? Do I interline it with fleece? Is that necessary? Will the bomber jacket just out of the tapestry and the really lightweight, um, you know, lining fabric be enough? Since I'm going to use it as a layering piece, would it be more wearable to make it just with the lining so that I can wear it spring, fall, and winter instead of adding the fleece, which would sort of make it really just fall and winter? Or would it be too light without the added fluff of the fleece? I don't know, and I'm torn. And I think the fleece is definitely going to overcomplicate things because of the bulk. But is it worth it? That's my question to the group. Please answer me that in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about anything that I've shared today. It's been so good to be back and I hope that you're doing well. Cannot wait to see you again and the video will be coming shortly because I will be recording it right after this one and we'll talk about my sewing plans. See you next time and stay creative folks. Bye-bye.